All processes that attract a payment will have a system-generated invoice or invoices, as well as the accepted payment channels to be used. As such, you should not make any additional payments to facilitate the processing of your application. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the tutorial for transfer by Chaji in a public auction form LRA 61A. The transfer by Chaji in a public auction form LRA 61A is the process of conveying ownership rights of a property from a Chaji, for example a bank, to a transferee or transferees being the highest bidder in a public auction. For starters, you will open your browser of choice and type rdsasa.lands.go.ke. Once you land on the login page, key in your rdsasa ID or national ID number as well as your password and then click continue. Upon doing so, you will be provided with a one-time password code, OTP, which will be sent to the phone number you used to register with on the platform. Once you have received the OTP, type the code onto the OTP prompt box and click login. You will then be navigated to the dashboard where you will find a number of services listed under the departments we have in the State Departments of Lands and Physical Planning. The account you are logged in with is your private account. For you to initiate this process, you will need to switch to your Advocate account. So go ahead and click on the profile icon. It will display a drop-down menu with the professional account which has been approved for you as an advocate. For more information on how to upgrade to a professional account, check out our YouTube video through the link featured in the video description. On the landing page, navigate to the Land Registration section and click on View More. Here, you will find various land registration services. Click on Transfer and the transfer process we are applying for is the transfer by Chaji in a public auction from LRA 61A. So go ahead and click on it. You will be directed to the applications page and here there are a number of tabs provided. We have five tabs, namely Pending, Ongoing, Completed, Rejected, and Cancelled. All applications that you have initiated as an advocate will be listed among the tabs provided, depending on the level of processing of your application. The Pending tab is for the applications that you have initiated but have not completed. They still need some action from your side or from the parties involved in the application. The ongoing tab features applications which you have made and it's up to the ministry's side through the relevant officials to work on it. The completed tab is for applications which you have completed and have been validated by the relevant ministry officials. The rejected tab is for applications that have been rejected by the ministry officials for one reason or another. Reasons for rejection will be communicated to the applicant. And the cancel tab is for applications which have been cancelled by the different parties involved in the application process. For you to initiate this application, you will click on the New Application button on the top right hand corner. Please note that if you have not switched roles, the New Application button will be unavailable. You will then be navigated to a page with FAQs which are the frequently asked questions specific to transfer by Chaji in a public auction application. You can go ahead and explore the FAQs to get an understanding of this application. Take a look at who the actors are, what are the payments and the documents needed for this application. An important part of the FAQ section is the payment required, which is only the stamp duty payment. At no point will the advocate or the actors be asked for any other payment whatsoever. If satisfied, click on Next. The next section is the proprietorship details. Here, you'll first be required to fill in the parcel details. Go ahead and enter the parcel number in the format, registry, forward slash block, and then the block number with no space in between, forward slash the parcel number. You will then provide the charge entry number. In case the entry is more than one, you will separate the charge entries using commas. The next part is the transferer, being the chargey details, where you'll enter the RDSSR ID of the transferer. A pop-up box will appear requiring you to select the category of person to execute as the transferrer. The person to execute as the transferrer can either be the director or company secretary, the attorney, or appointed signatories. If you choose the attorney option, you'll key in the power of attorney entry number in the format, registry, forward slash, the entry number, forward slash, month of registration, forward slash, year, and then click on search and the power of attorney entry number will be listed underneath the search bar along with his or her Ardhisasa ID. If the Ardhisasa ID does not feature, it means the attorney has not transacted on Ardhisasa, 
and thus you will be required to enter the Adicessor ID of said attorney and then click on Save. For the purpose of this tutorial, we will choose the Director or Company Secretary option, then proceed to enter the Adicessor ID, then click on Search. And the name of the Director or the Company Secretary will be listed below alongside his or her Adicessor ID, then click on Save. The next part is the transfer details. First, you'll be required to choose the holding type which can either be sold, joint proprietorship, or proprietorship in common. In case of joint proprietorship or proprietorship in common, all transferees should be added. In our case, the transferee's holding type is sold, so proceed to enter the Ardecessor ID of the transferee and click on Search. And the details of transferee will be displayed below and the name of the person executing on behalf of the transferee will be listed on the right. The next part is the charge details, where he or she can be registered on Ardisasa or not. If the charge is not registered on Ardisasa, you will be required to provide the full name and the identification number of the charge. In our application, the charge is registered on Ardisasa. Therefore, you will enter the Ardisasa ID of the charge and the details will be populated below. If satisfied, click on Next. You will then proceed to the next page, the transfer details. First, you will enter the date of auction, then proceed to enter the consideration details. Here, you will enter the amount, then proceed to choose the currency for the consideration amount. For currency other than the Kenyan shilling, a current exchange rate will be required for the purpose of assessment of stamp duty. The next part is the pickup person details. This is the person to pick up the title after the transfer has taken place. So proceed to enter the Ardecessor ID of the individual, then click Search, and the details of the person will be listed below. If you have any additional provisions that the transfer is subject to, you can add them in the text box provided under the additional provisions and click Add. We will then proceed to the Valuation Details part, where you need to select the status of the land. It can either be developed or undeveloped. If you choose the develop option, you need to fill in the type of development and in our case, the parcel we are transferring is developed and the type of development is offices. As is featured in the FAQs section, one of the requirements needed to facilitate this application process to fruition is the stamp duty payment. Therefore, the next part is stamp duty details where you can apply for exemption of stamp duty or not. If you apply for exemption of stamp duty, you are required to select the section or legal notice under which the exemption is sought. It can be section 17, another section, or legal notices. If you have any other additional details specific to the stamp duty payment, you can add them in the text box provided. We then proceed to the law firm details, where you will need to provide the details of the law firm that you are acting under. Here, you have the option of tying the application to a registered law firm on Ardisasa where you will be required to type in the antecessor ID of the law firm and then click on search and the law firm details will automatically be populated. However, in our case, you will be manually keying in the law firm details. To begin with, enter the name of the law firm. Also provide the physical address of the law firm. Provide the postal address of the law firm. You will enter the phone number of the law firm and you will also enter the email address of the law firm. As far as the website, as well as the street address of the law firm are concerned, they are not mandatory fields to fill. However, you can provide the information required, if available. If satisfied, you can then go ahead and click on Next. The next page is the Document Upload page. It is important to save all the required documents in one folder for easy upload. So go ahead and click on the Choose File button to upload a scanned copy of the Memorandum of Sale, Notice of Sale, Application for Adjudication of Stamp Duty only if exemption has been sought, Notice of Redemption, Notice to Charge -off, Auctioneer Registration Certificate, and the Certificate of Sale from your local machine or device, and the documents will be listed against the Choose File button. If you have any additional documents which you feel will support this process, you have the option of providing those documents on the additional documents link. If you are satisfied with the documents you have submitted to facilitate the application process, you can proceed and click on Next. The last step is the confirmation step with all the details that you have provided. So scroll through the entire page and go through the details. If satisfied, you can go ahead and click on Submit. 
You also have the option of going back if you need to edit any information. For this case, we'll proceed and click on Submit. Upon doing so, you'll be prompted to approve on whether you indeed want to submit the request and then proceed and click Yes. You will then get a confirmation message on a pop-up box which affirms that the application has been submitted successfully and then proceed and click on close. At this point, the transferrer and the transferee will all get a notification on SMS as well as an email communicating that the transfer process has been initiated. Subsequently, the advocate will be notified to execute on the application with a signature and also confirm representation of some or all of the parties listed. A key thing to note is that you can view the progress level of your application on the progress bar as is featured on the upper section of your screen upon submission of your application. As mentioned earlier, the advocate gets notified to confirm the application to present the parties listed. As such, the next thing is execution, which is for the advocate to accept or reject representation for the parties involved. So go ahead on the execution section and click on accept for the parties they represent. Upon doing so, you will be prompted to approve on whether you want to represent the party, so proceed and click on Accept, and all the parties involved will be notified that the advocate has accepted to represent him or her in the transfer. The last part is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append their signature. There are a number of options on how to append your signature. To begin with, there is this signing area here as you can see, which allows you to sign with your computer mouse if you are using a desktop or a laptop, and alternatively with a stylus pen or your index finger if you are using a phone or tablet to access the platform. You also have the option of signing with another device. When you click on this option, a pop-up box will appear displaying four alternative options for signing. For more information on the available signing options on Ardisasa, kindly view our YouTube tutorial explaining the same through the link featured in the video description. In this case, the advocate will sign on the signing area. He or she will place the cursor on the blank space, press and hold the left click button, and then go ahead and append the signature. If satisfied, he or she can click on save. However, if not pleased with it, there is the option of removing it by clicking on clear, and then appending the signature once again to their liking. If satisfied with it, he or she will click on save. There's a pop-up notification that will appear requiring you to affirm that you want to submit this as your signature. Click on Yes, and the signature status will change to Signed. It is key to note that the advocate must be in communication with the parties involved throughout the verification process for ease of operations. The Application Verification section shows the parties involved haven't verified the application. As such, once the transferrer, being the director, acting for the chargee, has logged in, he or she will navigate to the notification tab on the left side of the screen and check for the notification prompting him or her to verify the application. An OTP prompt box will be displayed with a Get OTP button alongside it. It is important to note that below the OTP prompt box is a disclaimer for the party verifying. It instructs him or her to only enter the OTP code if he or she authorizes the application made on his or her behalf by the advocate involved in the process. The parties involved can also change the advocate if they wish so. So if the individual is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button and an OTP code will be sent to their phone number. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Upon doing so, a pop-up box will appear, affirming that the OTP has been successfully verified, so he or she will go ahead and click on Close. Below the OTP verification section is the Add Signature section, where he or she will be required to append the signature, so proceed to append your signature, and if satisfied, click on Save and affirm your signature by clicking Yes. The remaining party that hasn't verified the application is the transferee. The navigation process to verify the application is the same as that of the transferrer as shown earlier. Therefore, if the individual is aware of the process and approves it, he or she will then click on the Get OTP button, and an OTP code will be sent to the phone number that he or she used during registration. After receiving the OTP code, the individual will then key in the exact code received onto the OTP prompt box and click on the Verify button. Lastly is the Add Signature section, 
where the individual will be required to append their signature. So proceed to append your signature and affirm your signature and by doing so, the transferee has completed the application by consenting to the application. In drawing things to a close, the remaining part is to surrender the current title. So once the advocate has logged in, a ticket and an invite will have automatically be created by the system in order to enable you to surrender the title. So go ahead and navigate to the My Appointments tab on the left panel of your screen. You'll see an invite that has been created. Click on View. And you will be able to book the appointment on the calendar to your right. Select on the date and time that you'd like to surrender the title and then click on Submit. A pop-up will appear requiring you to confirm whether you want to set the appointment and then click on Yes. The invitation will then transition to the upcoming appointments tab. Click on the View button and you'll be able to generate a Get Pass which you'll present at the gate when going to surrender the title. You also have the option of rescheduling. If the date you previously selected is not convenient to you, you can choose the new date and time then click Reschedule. For more information on ticketing and appointments in general, click on the featured link in the video description to view our tutorial on it. Once the original title has been surrendered, the application will be forwarded to the Collector of Stamp Duty for Assessment. When the application is forwarded to the Valuation Department, the advocate should expect a call from the assigned valuer to assist with the access to the site. The approval of a valuation task will generate an invoice for stamp duty payment. The payment instructions are detailed in the invoice. Upon payment of the stamp duty invoice, you can click on the Confirm button. After the stamp duty invoice has been confirmed as paid, the Submit button, which is visible to the advocate, will be active, and they can now submit the application for registration. An important thing to note is that if the parcel has any pending land rent payments, you will be required to clear the land rent first. So go ahead and click on the Submit Request button. Click on Yes, and another notification will appear affirming that the application has been submitted successfully, and then go ahead and click on Close. Upon doing so, you'll notice that the status of the application will shift from pending to ongoing, meaning that your role as an advocate is accomplished. And it's now up to the ministry officials involved in the process to do their part in the process. When you click on View, you'll notice that the progress level of your application has advanced from the initial 40% to 60%. As the various ministry officials involved in the process work on it, you'll be able to view the progression of your application on the progress bar until the final approval is done, and at that point, the progress level will be at 100%. Once your application has been fully approved by the ministry, all parties involved will be notified that the transfer process has been approved. That's it for this tutorial for transfer by Chaji in a public auction on Ardisasa. Feel free to give feedback on this tutorial in the comments section below. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the bell button to get notifications on new videos as and when we post them. Kindly follow us on our social media handles as well. That is, at ardisasa underscore ke on Twitter and Instagram and at ardisasa on Facebook. Thanks for watching and goodbye.